Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a professional engineer in the land development industry and I've been doing this for over six and a half years. I've interviewed dozens of students for entry level roles and internship opportunities and I've attended a handful of career fairs. So I really wanted to make a video on how you can stand out and definitely highlight some of the observations of some of the mistakes that I'm seeing at career fairs. You'd be surprised, many students aren't doing the bare minimum to make themselves stand out at a career fair. So I really hope that this video helps and I'm ready to dive into it. Where I want to begin is how do you even prepare for a career fair? Preparation is actually one of the most important things that you can even do. So where I like to start is I like to do research on the companies. And I remember I made a TikTok and I said that you need to do research and people are freaking out like, oh my God, do I have to write a research paper? Like, do I really have to understand the ins and outs of the business? No. And I just wanna show you how easy it is to do this type of research. I can do it in less than five minutes, not even using AI. So what type of research do you need to do? You need to understand the types of engineering offered at that company. So step one is just selecting a few companies. You can go on Indeed and go right into Google, type in top 10 civil engineering firms. You can start there, but what I highly suggest you do is pick out a handful of large companies, a handful of small companies. Then from there, you can start understanding the types of engineering that's offered. You'd be surprised. Some electrical students walked up to me during the career fair boost when we were clearly a civil engineer engineering firm. Don't be that guy. The second thing I look for is the types of projects. So you really need to understand the company's bread and butter. And what I mean by that is some companies dominate in one particular sector. Like for instance, company A might really dominate the transportation sector, but they still offer maybe some geotech or survey services. But again, it's not their bread and butter market. Whereas some companies are just split, you know, 25% market share of land development, 25% market share of MEP, et cetera, et cetera. The reason why this goes hand in hand with your research on the companies is because let's say you're really interested in geotech, then you make this list of companies and none of them even offer geotech, then you kind of need to reevaluate your list or you need to be open-minded to the fields that you want to enter, but we'll get to that later. So again, the types of projects, well, how do you find that? I actually want to just walk through an example of how you can start understanding what types of projects they offer. Let's get to it. I'm just going to start with a company that I know, and it's a really big company. My buddy works there. It is called Jacobs. And I already have some purple here because I was doing some research. You can type in any company you want. And typically your best tabs are going to be careers, locations, and our projects. So, you know, my, my whole spiel was about you really need to know the projects that they're working on. So you can just do a quick Google search and start understanding what types of project Jacob, Jacobs is working on. Looks like they're doing some tunnels, looks like some traffic, wastewater treatment plant, but I need to do a little bit more research. So let's go back and maybe do careers. Careers is a really good way to see what the actual job offers and roles are. So let's say if I was in Florida, I'm gonna do Florida, okay. And then I'm gonna do capability. Let's see what capability is. I don't even know what that means. Come on. All right, looks like we have civil and structural. I'm gonna do construction, sure. Drafting and design, sure. Environmental, planning and consulting. And I don't know, I, I think that's good for now. So let's see what type of, let's see what type of opportunities this will show us. So here you can kind of go down the list and see what opportunities are available. It looks like there's 45 results. Obviously, you're not going to get a senior civil engineering job offer right out of school, but it's just good to kind of know what's out there. There are some entry-level positions. Now, last but not least, we got to do locations. Guys, it's so important to understand the office locations. People will come to my booth and say that they're really interested in an internship and they want it to be in Pensacola or Miami, but the company doesn't even have an office location there. You have to do some of this research to even understand where you might get an internship. So if we go back to locations, we can go here to view office locations in the US and start with you know your state. Maybe you live in Alabama. There's some locations in Birmingham. Go down this list and, and see if there's an office location close to maybe where your parents live or maybe where your school is because you really have to start mapping that out. Not every company will give you a stipend for working there. All right, so now you've done some basic research. I highly recommend you get out a Google Doc or a Note app and just start taking very basic notes. But now I wanna transition into some of the questions that you need to ask. And I want to share you the golden questions. The reason why I call these the golden questions is because these are things that you can't really find online. What you should be able to do is answer most questions. Like for instance, where are you guys located? 
you should be able to figure that out. What type of engineering do you offer? Well, we've already done the research. We know that they offer civil engineering. When you go in with those sorts of questions to the career booth, it just shows that you haven't really done research. I'm not impressed by your questions because these are things that you probably should have already figured out. And I hate to sound mean, but the people that go to the career fairs, especially engineers going out of their way and sacrificing you know, a day or two of doing this, they're hoping to find strong candidates. And a strong candidate will ask very good questions questions and make a strong impression. But anyways, let's get to the question. So question one, how is the team structure and dynamic? Do you guys have a handful of PMs? project managers. Does each PM have an EI, engineering intern as we call them, or EIT? How many project managers and EIs do you have in this office? What about in the Jacksonville office location? I'm really interested in working there. How is the workflow for the next one to two years? Are you guys staying busy? These questions are important because if you think about it, it shows that you're evaluating where you might work. Wouldn't you want to know more about the work environment that you're about to work in? I mean, you can look up things like 401k match. You can look up things like salary on Glassdoor. I would stray away from asking the questions that you know you will find online. Ask the questions that you need an inside scoop on from these recruiters and maybe the engineer that's going to be at the career fair. So like, what are some of your busiest markets right now? I see that you guys are doing transportation and a lot of survey. How's the survey group? How many people do you have in your office for survey? Are you guys looking for a new hire, especially during my graduation year? Are you in the hunt for a full-time employee right now? Are you guys even offering internships. I'm very interested in the Tampa region. I see that you have a Tampa office location. Are you looking for an intern this summer? Because that's what I'm looking for to get hands-on experience. Do you guys offer training or host any lunch and learns? Do you guys have any incentives like health benefits, yearly gifts? Do you guys do gift cards? What's something fun that the office does or maybe something that happens nationwide? Again, you're about to spend a couple years of your life working at a company, hopefully. So these are very important important questions and you can gauge what their answers are. If a company is giving answers like, oh yeah, like surveying department isn't that busy, but the transportation department is, you know, and if you're interested in surveying, well, those are, those are signs that you kind of need to watch out for. Also, if they can't blatantly state how the dynamic of, of the team is, you know, you, you'd want to try to get information out of them to understand what that work environment is. Your work environment is one of the most important things about an internship. You can either have a really good mentor or you can have a really bad mentor. Now that we've gone through some of the golden questions and some of the research, let's talk about what to bring to a career fair. You definitely want at least 10 paper resumes, even more. I mean, spend the extra 25 cents to print off more resumes. I've had people show up and not hand me a resume. Think of your resume as the golden ticket. It's the application. Sometimes companies are even taking this resume, storing them, scanning them, and saving them for a later date. Don't skip the resume. Also, get a cheat sheet on the companies. So that can be from your notes app. That can be a piece of paper. Have it be like a checklist to make sure you've asked all the right questions. The reason why I love that is because if you're interviewing for a company at their career fair, it shows how interested you are in them. It shows that you've prepared. And do you know how much value that adds to you, your brand? You're trying to build a brand, a presence, make an impression to this company who's about to make an investment in you. Show how you are an investment to them. Okay, a few tips and tricks that I have is don't close yourself off to one type of field. I'm going to use civil engineering as an example because I am a civil engineer. There's transportation, geotech, land dev, structural, environmental, water resources, the list goes on. Pick like two or three and clearly say, I'm interested in these and I'm trying to find an internship to learn more about it. Why is this important? is because I've had students, really great students interview, and then we get to the very bottom of the ninth inning and they just say, yeah, well, I'm just interested in structural. And it's like, well, ah, we offer everything besides structural. But let's say you never find a structural position. Let's say you end up hating structural. You're gonna look back and miss out on those opportunities that you could have had. And what I will tell you is any experience is good experience. Experience on a resume is one of the most valuable things you can ever have on there. So don't close yourself off when you're interviewing these companies because they're not interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Say that I am interested in blank and blank, geotech and land development. Pick two, run with it, it'll open up more opportunities. Now that you have prepared for your career fair and you feel like you've made your cheat sheet, you got your resumes, you're looking sharp, please dress well. I don't even wanna talk long about that, just 
look nice, look decent. Now it's all about what you do during the career fair. All right, what to do. When you first get there, you're kind of going to be nervous. There's a lot of people. Everyone's dressed up fancy. You're going to get hot, especially if you're an introvert. So one of the best things that you can do is to pick maybe a smaller firm, a smaller booth where there's not a lot of people. Maybe they already just started setting up and just get an icebreaker going. Just say, hey, how are you? You're my first booth of the day. I'm really excited about this opportunity. And you know, I, I have a few questions for you. Kind of play the young young and fresh card because it kind of just reduces all the nerves. Because once you get a couple of those under your belt, then it's time for you to maybe go to some of the bigger companies. You know, maybe it's where all the students are going. Slowly but surely build up your confidence to the key companies that you really want to talk to. All right, here's what not to do. This is very important. In my personal opinion, I think the robotic elevator pitch is not human. Do not ramble on for four to five sentences of this program speech. Because if you think about it, I mean, we're all humans. The people at the career fair, the recruiters, everyone is just human. And how do humans interact typically? Hey, how are you? Hi, my name is whatever. You know, I appreciate you coming out today. Once that awkward pausing strikes, then it's your time to strike. Not, hey, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a civil engineering student. Uh, um, I like this. Uh, you know, I'm really interested in there. I want to do this. And uh, it's just kind of like, okay, you didn't even allow that person, the other person that's interviewing you to, to even get their name, to even understand who they are, understand what their position is. You could have just introduced yourself and went on your whole spiel and didn't realize that you're talking to one of the project managers one of the offices that you might intern at. Get to know that person. So here's an easy and I think just better intro is, hey, my name's Griffin. Appreciate you guys taking the time today. See kind of where it builds. Maybe they might say, howdy Griffin, I'm Blake. I'm the PM at Jacobs, whatever. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here, yada, yada, yada. Maybe it goes somewhere, but maybe it doesn't. Let's say the reverse side, you just say, hey, appreciate you guys taking the time today. They just kind of nod their heads. Once you feel that awkward pausing, then I would say you can strike with a pitch and it can be short and sweet. So it can just be like, so anyways, I'm a civil engineering student in my junior year looking for an internship. I'm interested in what you guys do and I just had a few questions if you don't mind. The reason why you want to start with that is because that's going to be their first question. That's always my first question is what field are you interested in? Like what major are you? And then what year are you? Because on the reverse side of me being a recruiter, I'm trying to understand, you know, what position you're after. Are you looking for a full-time role? Are you looking for an internship? So that's that. You're already answering their question. I want you to control the interview, control the situation. And then from there, you're setting the tone and you're owning the conversation. So you know, you won't have to make them dig it out of you. Now, before continuing this great example, let me share a few bad examples that I have seen in the past and you don't want to do this. Don't be that guy. So here's the person. Here's the student. Hi, how are you? Good. So what do you guys do? We're a civil engineering firm. Uh, our headquarters is in Tampa, Florida, yada, 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 yada. Oh, that's cool. Here's my resume. Do you guys have an internship this summer? Yeah, we do. But, uh, uh, what, Tell me more. I mean, what's your major? What year are you in? I'm a senior. Uh, I'm an electrical student. Guys, I'm not kidding. This has happened in the past. And do you see how short that was? There wasn't much owning the conversation. It was just like a whole bunch of open-ended questions. And I can tell you that this person is not making an impression because clearly they have done no research. Clearly they just walked up with no purpose and clearly they are, they went to the wrong booth. What I'm here to say is you can be better and you will be better. And all it takes is a little bit of preparation. So this goes back to our whole conversation about research, questions, Questions. So let's go back to the good example. You said, anyways, I'm a civil engineering student, my junior year, looking for an internship. I'm interested. I have a few questions if you don't mind. And they'll say, cool, well, shoot. Or they might even want to start talking more about their company. I don't know, but you kind of gauge it. And since you're setting the tone, it's kind of in your full control. Then you can start asking some of those questions that we wrote down. So let's walk through a couple of them. I wouldn't immediately go into how is the team structure dynamic. I would say you need to build off of what you just said. You already told them you had a few questions about the company. So maybe dive in and say, hey, I noticed on your guys' website that you're doing that tunnel project located in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, I'm really interested in that type of work. And, you know, I'm actually really interested in Atlanta, Georgia too. Do you guys offer any internships right now? Or are you guys looking 
for any full-time positions during my graduation year of 2028. Maybe, you know, maybe they have the answer that you're not looking for. Maybe they do have the answer that you're not looking for, but then you can keep striking with questions. Well, let's say if it was the flip side of like, well, no, yeah, we're not really looking for a position in Atlanta. Well, then you can start steering it towards, well, what are some of your busy, busiest markets right now? What are some of the office locations that need the most help? Try to steer and, and find, find your opportunity. You have to guide the conversation to find exactly what you want, which at the end of the day is a job. And that job is going to turn into a career. Oh, well, that's honestly all I have for today, guys. Career fairs can be tough to navigate, especially if you're socially awkward and introverted, but it's definitely a skill that you can build upon with enough reps and with enough preparation. That's why it's important to actually attend every career fair that you can, even when you're a freshman. And typically there's a couple each year. So by the time that you're a senior, you know exactly what you're walking into. Don't fear rejection as a freshman or sophomore. I faced a lot of rejection. It's not personal, just like school. Just because you fail a class or fail a test doesn't mean that you're not gonna get your degree. Half the battle is just not giving up. But like I said, that's all I have for today. I hope this helps. If you're a student, comment below. Tell me what your graduation year is. And maybe hopefully I see you guys out in the workforce someday. Peace out.